Hello, welcome back to Auto Pop Culture. Today we're going over the Toronto based country singer called Orville Peck and his second album called Bronco. So I love Orville Peck. I love him so much. I think he's so talented. I think he's so his songs hit a lot of spaces, but they also just sound so good. The lyrics are great. It's, the production's great. It's a he definitely has been somebody, one of the few artists that I keep track of that literally has stayed consistent throughout all of his songs. Every release is exactly what I would think and exactly and or it takes me further past it. It's like, oh, I didn't know that one, I didn't know that he had that range, vocal range, or two, I didn't really know this that's a very interesting topic to talk about in a song. So I got into him of course, like I feel like around every the time time that everybody else got into him with his um uh, Dead of Night, that was the first one I got into him, and I really loved it. I love his voice, and I listened to Pony, which came out in 2019, his debut album. L fell in love with it. I still listen to it to this day. And, um, but yeah, and then I listened to Show Pony, that came out in 2020, which is an EP, and I thought it was okay. It was one of those things where just, like, I felt like it was an extended version of Pony, but when he started throwing this album out, and the way that he wanted to do it was pretty much have it in a, um, pretty much have it in a, like, chapters. So he did release the first chapter, released the second chapter, but I feel like he kind of just, like, decided not to do the third chapter. Just, he just blended in the second two chapters and then released Bronco fully. So not that that's really a, an issue or anything. I liked the way that it was going and I, Pretty much love, and I loved every single song. So in my head, I was like, okay, so the songs that are left that are on Bronco, that's the ones I'm gonna be focusing on the most. And aside from maybe digging deeper into the songs I already know, which of course exactly what happened. I fell into these songs, and the songs are definitely talking about a lot of, a lot of topics that he doesn't usually that he hasn't touched on yet, being some being about like heartbreak, some being about his. Um, of him wandering around and kind of figuring out who he is as a person. And then the third uh, bit being about kind of pretty much about um, his alleged uh, uh, birth town, which is South, uh, South Africa, Joh Johannesburg kind of area. So, which we don't really know too much about him. He likes to keep it that way. So we don't know what he looks like. We don't know what his actual name is. There is speculations that he is in a Canadian uh, guy that's part of that was part of a, a Canadian band back in the day kind of thing, but haven't really been confirmed. Even though there's been some tattoos that look exactly like with this guy, but I personally like the idea that he's keeping it mystery because I feel like it. I it. With the mystery and the, and him wanting you to think about what you think it, what you think he looks like or what you think he stands for, it's great because my imagination is crazy. So in my head, I see him as like the country phantom of the opera kind of thing. Just has that kind of mystery, but same time just sings so well. Anyway, back to get into this. So let's get into this album, talk about it, and pretty much I will say that I liked every single song, every single song. It, Iris Rose was one of them that I was kind of eh with at first, but it grew on, it has grown on me because I listened to it twice while I was while I was getting ready and getting set. So I definitely like it. Um, so let's starting off with we're gonna go through the whole thing. So buckle up for this long uh, video, but I really really want to break down these songs. Uh, so the first song we talk about is the first song, which is Do uh, Daytona Sand. So this song talks about the idea for what I feel like it's about is a guy that won't commit to Orville with a possibility that he might be in a closet. So this, the song is, the song is amazing. I love the song. I love the production. Um, there's parts that I think that that's what he means is because he's, he says, so write him up, um, rack him up, uh, big blonde. I think I could have been your man. Um, and then the part that goes that I think it's, is the guy, Big Blonde, responding to him by saying, it's not that I don't care, I just, it's just hard to make a plan. Um, and then he goes on talking about, like, goes on further by saying, like, 
They say some some stones are, are better left unturned, so he kind of regrets knowing this guy, but he really still loves, really has a lot of love for this person. Um, but he's skeptical about this, because he's like, is that another whispered plan? I've been around long enough to keep, to know you can't trust a man. So he knows that there's, he's been broken, he's been hurt before by men before and lovers in the past. So he's not stupid. He's not, he knows in this situation, he's like, these things aren't really happening as much as you want to have these happen. You're telling me at night how much, oh, we're going to run away and do all these things, but they never really happen. So, but I'm been around the block enough to know that these things aren't, that the way you are isn't going to change anytime soon, which really sucks. Um, so there's been speculation that this is about, uh, Diplo because Diplo and Orville has been timed together and whenever Orville has responded to Diplo in different, in certain spaces on Instagram, he's responded as like, happy birthday, big, uh, big blonde or something, something big blonde. So we think it, and I'm not the only one that thinks this, like the Toyverse thinks it and a lot of other places, but like. Pretty much, they're like, is this about Diplo? Because Diplo has, there's also a legit space that said that Diplo has said that he doesn't really lean to either side, and the, or there's he's a, he's not fully committed to one side of a sexual preference. So maybe this is about him not really wanting to commit to Orville, or what, not really wanting to come out. So he know because he knows he has a name to himself of being that kind of like fuckboy kind of direction, so he doesn't really want to have that completely be tore down, because it could turn out, if he's gay, that maybe that following doesn't, like, kind of trickles away. Um, but anyway, I like this song. I think it's great. The Curse of the Blackened Eye. This one's a su very surprising, because like, when I first heard it, I didn't think about what it meant, and so I just love the song. I was like, I haven't sing it in a long... It's, it felt like a complete, like, Pitbull song. I'm singing it in Spanish, and then you realize what he's really talking about. Like, oh... So that's why I thought with it. this pretty much happens with this. This is about an abusive relationship, but not about being in it, about more being the aftermath of being in one. So there's a part that he's, he says right here, he says, uh, sat, uh, uh, sat around last year wishing so many times I would die, um, left it all, left it all, and now I can see the night. So that's pretty self-explanatory. But then it goes into, it ain't the letting go, it's more of the things that you take with, that you take with. And pretty much an idea of just like, all this trauma that you felt from this abusive relationship doesn't end when you leave. It stays with you. And so all of those things kind of make you very self-aware and very aware about what's happening, what people are doing and questioning everybody. Um, and then it goes into... It's true, true, it follows me around, nothing to lose, wouldn't miss it anyhow. Um, so pretty much he's haunted by this trauma, this curse, which being, uh, the curse is the trauma. Um, and pretty much saying, he's like, yeah, it follows me around, it take, comes in whatever it wants to, and, but at the same time, I don't miss being in that situation, so at least it feels like a, it has a weird kind of uplifting direction, it's like, nothing to lose, I wouldn't miss it anyhow, pretty much saying it's like, as much as it does roam around me, I am kind of blessed it's not physically there in front of me, like he's not in that abusive relationship anymore. Um, going to Out of Town, or Out of Town, Out of Time, I really, really like this song, I just love it so much, the production's amazing, and his vo vocals, amazing. This one talks about this, uh, actually I don't really know what it talks about. It feels like he doesn't really want to talk to anybody. He feels like he's, it feels like he's been in a bit of a rut right now and he doesn't really want to, he's got guys trying to flirt with him. He got this girl telling him he isn't, that he isn't really, that she doesn't really like Elvis. And so he's like, just these type of things are not what he's looking for at that time kind of thing. Um, he says, bottleneck and old blue jeans tells me we got something special. Now I say, Something, some things aren't what they seem. And then he goes into, she tells me that she isn't, she, she don't like Elvis. I say, I want a little less conversation, please. So it seems like he's kind of just like, but he keeps saying, I'm out of town, out of ta uh, town, out of time. So I'm not really sure if he's saying, I don't know if that means like he's 
I don't know. I really don't know. I'm still thinking about this one. It's, if you know or have any idea what it's about, please, please leave that in the comment. I really, really, really want to know. Going into the next one, Lafayette. This one is about thinking about his, this past lover he had that lives in the South and just thinking about how much he misses this guy and how much he thinks about this guy a lot. Um, he goes, I knew I'd lose you the moment that we met, but the bayou still sings every night in my head. The bunts, the months march on, or march away, Lafayette. I hear it that I hear it takes years for the heart to reset. And then he goes into another one, which I really like is, you know, I, I recall ever someone saying, or somebody saying there's, there ain't no cowboys left, but they ain't met you or me. They ain't met you, Lafayette. Uh, pretty much kind of call, calling him a cowboy, calling them and kind of like, we were different and we were so like, just pronouncing how much special and how much great their connection was and how he does miss him. Um, going to the next one is call, uh, Come On Baby Cry. This one talks about the idea of just wanting his, it doesn't seem like it's about a lover more than it's like a support system of just like, he sees a guy or he's a he has a friend that just won't be vulnerable around him. So he was making him show him. It's like, you don't have to. Like, I want to see you cry. I want to see you be be okay with being vulnerable around me. The song's great. He does a great job with his vocals. It's just, it's amazing. One of the other songs I didn't know that he has a, he has a big, big range. I did not know. There's a, oh, out of town. Out of, uh, I don't know why I keep saying out of town. Out of time. This one has that part where he goes, it's like almost share range. Like, what is it? Out of time kind of part. It's, 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 that's very high. And I was never have heard him hit that vocal range that high. So I'm very just like, wow. Um, going to the next one, Irish or Irish, uh, Iris, um, Rose. This one talks about South America, uh, South Africa and missing it. And he talks about like things like the Bez Valley, never seen this or never saw the day. That's a suburb, a uh, suburb that's within the Johannesburg area. Um, do, 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 do. pretty much he just thinks about this, thinks about that area all the time. He just thinks about that, that country, you know, um, going into the next one, kind of talking more about it. Uh, Kalahari Down pretty much talks about the, which is the closest thing I feel like it's like, if he changed it just as touch, it would be a perfect Australian song. Um, but this song talks about just being in the desert and from where he was born and just the idea of him just like kind of wild west meets South African West kind of, or outlaw kind of thing. Um, it just talks about that kind of just like, he, he says, left to Rome, um, a reckless wonder. Uh, raising sand on the setting sun. I was born in the um, bad, Badlands, honey. Um, strange places for a boy to drown. Uh, strange place for a boy to drown. I love that line. I was born in, bad, in the Badlands. Strange place for a boy to drown. You can't drown in the Badlands. It's dry. But that's the whole idea. It's just like his, his misery in that situation had, and his traveling but really doesn't want to travel but it's kind of part of him kind of thing is what I feel like it's about um going into the next one Bronco this one talks about the kind of live your life and go out and be wild and be that wild Bronco that you always that's inside of you and don't hold yourself in kind of thing I love this one this kind of reminds me of the last album with um like a mix between uh Winds Change and Buffalo Run and I feel like that's exactly what it is because it goes, it has that kind of galloping, uh, production that goes on with it that I really like. Um, it's, pr it's pretty much what I can tell you about it. It's just a, it's a really, really good song. Going into the next one, which is tre uh, Trample Out the Days. So I feel like this is about a male prostitute that's down near, um, Maholland Drive or, Bull or on some type of boulevard because he goes boulevard boy give me nothing you're the one i chose um flash a smile while the trap while the traffic slow take a seat while i trample out the days so this feel that's why that's why i feel like it's about a male prostitute and he's kind of like very rock setting it with him and just like you're doing your you're doing your best out there but 
kind of like, I want to choose you kind of thing. There's great vocals in this, which is insane. You have to listen to it. Um, but that's pretty much it what I got for that. Uh, Blush. This one talks about a lover who left him, but it feels like it's kind of like maybe one of the first loves he's had. Um, because it feels like that idea is like he's not, he misses this person in a way, but he doesn't in the same time. But he, I feel like it's that kind of thing where you just like, you meet, you, when you first come out, you meet a couple people that you're really, really into, and you get a lot of short loves. You get a lot of short term, like, short term, short term love, lovers that kind of come in and they leave. And then some people kind of get this, can smell that you're just got, you just came out, or you have a lot of, um, like I call, like to call queer illusions because when you first come out, you think you're like, I want an abtastic guy. I want him to have the beard. I want him to be fucking everything I've seen in TV. And you kind of, your expectations are very, very unnaturally high because you're thinking that's what it's supposed to be like. And then you kind of go lower and lower a little bit when you realize it's like, okay, that's not how, it's not how this goes, you know? Um, but he's, cause he goes and says, um, do, 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 do. I walked, I walked you to mine. Promise we take our time. Maybe some of us aren't meant to win. And he goes, saddle up, down, uh, right down. Maybe when the tide comes out, comes out, come find me waiting at the street where we met. Um, and then the part that I really, really feel like he's talked, he's really pointing out the kind of him being still new to all of it, which was red sky at night. I was holding too tight. You left me alone by the times. Um, so I feel like in that situation, he realizes, he knows, he's like, I got into you, I got way too into you, and it kind of scares you off. And I do know now that that's kind of, that I kind of went a little too hard, too fast, and so I get for why you left, but if you ever, if we ever reconnect, like, please, please, please find me kind of thing, um, and understanding that he's kind of like a wanderer kind of thing. Um, Hexy Mountains is just something that's very interesting because I did not know that the desert mountain range that was in the um, Joshua Tree National Park was called that. I didn't know it was called that. I didn't know, had, I didn't know they had a name. So it's kind of funny being a Californian myself. I was just like, oh, didn't know that. Um, but this song, I do not have an idea about what it's about. But one line that I really, really like is... When he says, um, would it be swell if I could just get this, these things, or get things off my chest, and maybe you'd learn to live with what's inside your head, Hexy Mountain said. So I feel like maybe he went to that Joshua Tree, like usually a lot of people do, to kind of get that like, spiritual awakening, and, and kind of find themselves. They usually take, like, some type of drug, um... But maybe that's what he was doing, and that maybe the mountains kind of spoke back to him, saying to kind of embrace his flaws and embrace embrace the person that he is, you know. Um, going into the next one, Let Me Down, or Let Me Drown. This one talks about the um, the idea that, which is, it's very heartbreaking, heartbreaking too, because he can, you can feel the sadness as he's singing this song. It's a, it's, I feel like it's about him letting go of his lover or telling his lover to move on because and let him kind of be in his own misery he he knows that he's pretty much in a very in a cycle of kind of misery with himself and he has a lot of work to kind of work that out but he also realizes that he's bringing down his partner in that situation so he's so he's pulling cutting the cords himself saying like i'm letting go so that you can go off and not, I can, I'm not tying you down while I work this shit out with myself, you know? Um, cause he says, um, this, I swear there's good things that are coming to you, but I can't be the one that, uh, left here dragging you down. Let me drown. He's like, let me drown pretty much like leave, let me deal with this, this side of me, this things that I'm going through. I don't need, I don't want you to carry this burden with you. Um, no, I, and then he says, no, I can't be kind since I lost my mind. So that in this town just ain't big enough for the both of us now. So let me drown. So it seems like he's the, the things that he's been going through has caused, has added more, has turned him into a very 
not a kind person. He's kind of rude or whatever, and he's just not really being kind to his partner. So he's just like, and he can tell, he can feel that. So he's like, okay, I can't seem to be, I can't seem to find a space to be kind and push through it. So, and since I lose my mind, I'm just going to exit out kind of thing. But you can tell he doesn't really want to. It's not really, it's not like he's not looking forward to it. He just, he just knows that's what's best for the situation. Um, Any Turn is the next one. And I feel like this song is literally reminds me of I've Been Everywhere by Johnny Cash. It just, I just, it, and it feels like it's about touring, going from this place to this place and this place and that place. And this guy's on the toilet, this guy wants to flirt with me, this guy, I, this guy flirt with me, but then he did it, went out with this guy, so it made me cry. And it's just a fast track of just like small events happening with the arc, overarching theme about his touring with his, uh, band. Um, going into the next two pretty much is, um, well, next, they're both completely different. Um, City of Gold. This one talks about Johannesburg and the idea of just like how much he misses it and how much he is. Well, this one talks about more of him being there and wanting to find a lover and just saying, it's like, if you do find me lover in the future, please, this is where I will be. I'll be in Johannesburg. This is where you can find me kind of thing. Um, and then the last song, I can, all I can say featuring Brie, uh, Salamina, Salmina. This one, or Bria Salamia, Salmia, or uh, Bria Salmina. Um, so this song is so good because Bria and him just harmonize is so clean. It's so clean and crisp. It's like a fucking fresh, fresh t-shirt, white t-shirt coming out of the dryer. It's just so perfect. Um, this song just talking about the idea, is just like them realizing in their own situations that love is not living, is not living there anymore, and their their love life is kind of, or the relationship that they're respectfully are in are, is not working out anymore. And he goes by saying uh, things, or thinking all the things we used, or she goes by saying, thinking all the things we used to see, all the pictures you and me, um, and now I know that this, but that, uh, and now I know that this time tomorrow I gotta go. I know that love doesn't don't live here anymore. Then there's amazing harmonies, and then they go into now all I can say is goodbye. Um, so it seems like he's. It seems like they are all both surprised that this is going down to the space. But he's like he did with Let Me Drown and all these other types, places. He takes on their responsibility. Just like it's it's just not going the way that we are going, that we want to, so I'm just going to cut it off myself kind of thing. And just the harmonies are amazing in that song. I love it. I want to, I think I've now even reviewing it, I have more thoughts about it. And I think it's really good. I think that this is, uh, I feel like, I feel like um, Pony is much more outlaw kind of country where this one kind of gives you more prairie country and more country country actually leans a little more into it. Um, I give this a 10 out of 10. I think it's a great, well done album. And I'm so happy it is because I was like, please, please, please don't get sophomore or sophomore slumps. Like, no, please be good. And it was, it's, it's great. I highly recommend this album. Leave a comment below. Tell me you thought. If you know more information about this, let me know. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell too, so you get more of my videos. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next video.